I mean, I, I grew up on my dad's uh, couch and in a normal council estate. Uh, and it was a weekend hobby for me and my dad. We kind of stumbled across it. We started racing RC cars when I was four. Right. And he thought I had really good hand-to-eye coordination, so he bought me a go-kart. It was really old from a newspaper. And we arrived at the, at the track for the first time. We were not welcome. We were the only, first, the only black people there. Right. And, um, you know, and it was very, very expensive. So my dad had four jobs just to keep us going. He was uh, going to London, doing his normal uh, job, which was IT at a railroad, railroad station. And then he would come home, he'd be putting up the sales signs, vending machines, anything he could find, a little bit of cash to, because it's so expensive. But my dad, what my dad didn't want, to, want us to do is to struggle as he did. He's from Grenada, came to London, and you know, struggled really, um, finding money, finding a good job. So he's like, I don't want my, my kids to struggle like I have. So he worked to the bone to create an opportunity for us. We dreamed of this as, as, as you know, when we were young and when I was young, when we were watching the Grand Prix and this is way, way beyond our dreams. And I think it's so important for kids out there to hopefully see this and know that no one's tell, uh, don't listen to anybody that tells you you can't achieve something dreamly impossible and speak it into existence. And you've got to work for it. You've got to chase it and you've got to never give up and never doubt yourself. Uh, I've never struggled for motivation in the sense of being competitive. Um, all I can do, I can't, con I can't control what they're doing. And there's no point worrying or thinking about what they may or may not be doing. All I can do is try and focus on, uh, you know, inwards and try to focus on being the best that I can be. What is my potential? How can I be more positive? How can I be, have more energy? How can I be healthy? How can I be um, a better person to be around, a better person to work with? So, I, you know, I think about all these kind of things. You no, know, naturally, I. I have that question and that sometimes that feeling on, on with other things. Um, you know, I'm not always the most positive person. You know, I I try everything, but there's you know things you try and you you keep failing and you're like, damn, I suck. And I could be really negative for a moment and I'm like, no, keep going, keep going. So I still have the willpower to get past that that wall that hits me in the face. But when it comes to driving, I I literally I've done it my whole life, and that's the thing. Has given me so much confidence. Um, I get in the car, put this helmet on, and I'm able to be whoever I want to be. I can be Superman under that helmet if I want to be, you know. And um, you know, generally when I was at school, I was I was relatively, you know, I was bullied at school. I was I was the, the little kid, and I and um, bullied on by the bigger kids. So I was very very much within my cocoon, or whatever you want to say, you know, in my own space. It's very quiet. But when I get in the car, I was able to put, put out my elbows and stand up for myself. And then eventually I got confidence. I was able to help you know, stand up for others that were bullied in school. Because I went to karate and I got black belt. And I, could, I could whoop someone's butt, which was amazing. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But I've never doubted myself in that. And I don't doubt myself in the car. I think there was one moment. I think it's naturally, it's much, much easier to learn. There's, there's more to learn when you have failures. That's really where the growth comes from. The biggest growth comes from. But there are still ways, you've got to find ways of, of growing from the, the success. But I think that's much part of our working ethic. You know, we've had wins, come straight back, we do our debrief and we don't skip anything. Um, uh, I've tried to be as, as critical and um, positive criticism, both on the car, on the team's performance, but then also on mine and it's, you've got to be as honest as you can be so I go away usually um, and over the next few days I'm looking over the race results I'm looking at um, data I'm looking at because I know in the race where I could have done better it could be the pit lane entry it could be exiting the pit box it could be your qualifying lap not maximizing it could be mistakes of time you've lost through the race because ultimately you just you're always chasing time and you don't like losing time during the race so there's, there are so many areas and you're chasing for perfection. And so there's not been a single race that's been perfect. There's been times where it's been really close. And it's a great feeling when you feel close, but you're like, it's still not there. So I've got more work to do. You look around, me personally, I, there's people that are on their social media all day, every day, looking at their phone and forgetting the rest of the world. And not taking time to see a sunset, not taking time to see the beautiful trees or whatever it is, you know? So I'm trying to always find a balance. Um, and mentally, it's really about ultimately feeling good about yourself. It's about uh, 
finding a way to, to make sure you love yourself. You have to really be able to love yourself, be comfortable in your own. So I've been really spending time um, trying to, again, just take time for me, making sure that I appreciate me. I appreciate, you know, acknowledging things that you do well, acknowledging also when you fail and you don't do it so great, it's okay. And not being so hard on yourself, all these different things. You know, I have days I wake up and feel groggy. I don't feel motivated to, to work out. I don't feel, oh, geez, where are we going? What is, what's next, dude? Should I continue racing? I think all these different things. Um, and then I'm like, damn it. And then there'll be, another, you know, the next hour or whatever it passes. I'm like, damn, I love what I do. Why would I ever consider not continuing? Um, but as I said, you just got to keep your mind occupied. So, Look, I mean, life is a struggle and I think um, I think every day is not, it, it, there's, there's failure, it's kind of, there's always an opportunity, a potential for failure. And I feel like we limit ourselves as human beings. I feel like we've got to be taking risks. Um, don't fear embarrassment. Um, don't fear any hardships. You know, if you don't, if you don't try, if you don't fail, you'll never know what your limits are, right? You'll, you'll be limiting yourself most of the time. Mm. Believing in yourself is, is one of the, I think that's probably been, personally one of the most important parts there's definitely days where I feel like a failure there's believe it or not I feel like a failure I feel mm -hmm. like I'm not good enough there's days where um, I don't like the way you look or the way you dress whatever it may be mm -hmm. but believing in yourself learning to love yourself yeah and just n not giving up you know that's just never giving up so I think that's really believing in myself is really what's enabled me to be to do what I do on track and then standing up for what I believe in and just going with your heart